Hello and welcome back to the Rock Code Academy. I am your host David Flanagan, although you can find me across the internet as Rock Code. Today we're taking a look at a new ingress controller for Kubernetes. This ingress controller is different from all the other ingress controllers, and you'll find out why in just a few moments. This ingress controller is from a company called Engrok. Yes, the company that provides a CLI that tunnels your local development environment onto the internet for you to share with anyone you want. They're now entering the Kubernetes ingress space, and like I said, it's a little bit different. So before we dive into what's different with Engrok, let's take a look at its traditional load balancer approach on EKS, the managed Kubernetes service from AWS. First, we have some pods and a service. We have the clustered V1 application, which is just a video of me tapping my watch. It's exposed currently only within the cluster as a cluster IP service called clustered V1. Now, if I want to expose this to the internet, I would go to VS Code, open the V1 YAML, and change cluster IP to a load balancer. We would then come back and reapply our configuration for V1. Now, when we run get service, in the background, AWS has something called a Cloud Controller Manager. And in fact, this is true for all cloud providers. It monitors for load balancer services and provisions a cloud load balancer. In this case, a classic load balancer on AWS. This gives us a domain name that we can then curl on the right port. Now, these take time. Cloud load balancers typically take anywhere from two to three minutes before they'll start serving traffic. Not only that, they're quite expensive. So a classic load balancer as provisioned this way by requesting a load balancer service will typically run around 18 to 20 bucks per month per load balancer. So if you go down this path and do this for all of your services that you need to expose, you can end up paying more in load balancers than anything else. And let's not forget, you've also got to pay the gigabytes of traffic submitted over the network too. Okay, so let's run it again. And now we have our exposed service via the expensive ELB. But we don't want to go that route. So let's revert this to cluster IP and reapply our V1 YAML. Now, I said the Engrox approach was a little bit different. So if you want to learn more, well, watch this video, but also check out the release blog on engrox.com. If you scroll down just a little bit, you'll find an architecture diagram for how this works. Now, Engrox Ingress Controller does not use a cloud provider load balancer at all, meaning you don't need to pay for one. What actually happens is that they have the Engrok Ingress service, which sits between your cluster and the internet. As your quest comes in, it hits the Engrok service, which will tunnel the traffic through to your Engrok controller and through to your application. Now, there's also a little bit of magic sauce, and that is that when you go through the Engrok Ingress service, you can also take advantage of all of their middlewares. So, in today's demo, we're going to deploy the Engrok Ingress controller attach a middleware for authentication to protect our application. And it's going to be faster than the ELB. Let's take a look. So let's go back to code and open ingress.yaml. Here we have a standard networking v1 ingress object where I've set the ingress class name to be ingrock. We have the backend configured to root everything on slash as a prefix to clustered v1 on the correct port. However, we need a host. So we're going to go to the Engrok portal, where we can ask for a new domain. Now, everything I'm doing today is on the Engrok free plan, which gives you access to one domain. We paste this in as the host and remove the Engrok CLI stuff, like so. Now, I also have a just file here that has a Helm upgrade install command. This installs the Engrok Ingress controller. For more details on how to install the Ingress controller, you can go to github.com slash ingrock slash kubernetes dash ingress dash controller, where the instructions to add the repository and configure the installation are all available. But for us, we're just going to run just ingrock to run the Helm upgrade command, which consumes my API token and authentication token from my environment. We can now do a kube control apply on my ingress resource. Now we can run kubectl get pods service ing. We'll see the ingress controller is running. We still only have a cluster IP service and no other load balancer service available. 
and our ingress is here. So let's head back to the Endrock portal where we're now on the endpoints page. We'll give that a quick refresh and we now see an endpoint created by the Endrock ingress controller. We can click on this and we see it's configured the edge. This just means that our backend is available for the app. So let's click and right away we have the video where I'll tap on my watch. Now, Engrok middlewares can be configured through this portal too. If you want to enable MTLS, you can. TLS termination, sure. Circuit breakers, yes. Compression, IP restrictions, OAuth, OIDC, request headers, response headers, SAML, and webhook verification. But of course, we don't want to configure this through the Engrok UI. As nice as it is, let's keep this Kubernetes native. So let's go back to VS Code, where I have a Google.yaml. Here, we're going to create a custom resource. This is an ngrok module set. We're going to call this Google Auth, and what we're saying is enable the OAuth module, the Google provider, and only allow access to this application with the email address david at rockcode.academy. We can also update our ingress to take advantage of this module set. We do this via annotations where we set kates.ngrok.com slash modules and we say apply Google Auth. Now I've called this Google Auth because it has a single module, but you can enable multiple modules at the same time. So now we can go back to our terminal and we can apply our Google authentication module set. We can then reapply our ingress with the new annotation. So let's head back to the portal and click on our application again. This time we get presented with a Google OAuth flow using ngrok.com as the OAuth application. We click login and there's the video. Let's go to OAuth and hit refresh. You can see here it's configured on the back end using a managed ngrok application. Of course, if you want to bring your own OAuth application, all you need to do is add a client ID and client secret to the CRD. You can get all the details you need from Cube Control Explain, ngrok module set dot modules dot OAuth. You can then add Google and you'll see everything you need is documented. So let's just try that again from another browser. This time I'll switch to my personal profile, which has a different Google account. We click login and we get access denied. So that's pretty sweet. You can expose an application in Kubernetes with the Ingrog Ingress controller, take advantage of their middlewares and avoid load balancer fees with your cloud provider. So go check out Ingrog Ingress and get started today for free. Go have some fun.